Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another train set review. So, to be quite frank with you, the last Backman train set I reviewed scared me, right? It scared a lot of people. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just trust me, check out the video, it was a very interesting time. I'm hoping, however, that today's train set isn't going to scare me, I'm hoping it should be a bit more of a pleasant experience. So, I'll lug it in, the train set is this, the Backman Thanet Flyer train set. As you can see, it contains the N-Class locomotive, which is looking lovely, actually, in that malachite green. Can't wait to get this out and uh, take a look at it, not had this out yet. Yet. So this train set, surprisingly enough, or not, has a pretty high RRP, 179 is the RRP, but there's something confusing about that in Backman's usual way, because the RRP for the Loco is 159, right? So how are they so similar? This train set contains way more than just the Loco, and in fact the Loco that costs 159 is in a plain black livery. This one's much more complex, as you can see in the Malachite green. So is the train set ridiculously cheap? Is the Loco ridiculously overpriced? Maybe they're both just overpriced but to different degrees i don't know but we're going to find out today either way rails has this train set on offer for 139 pounds which is much more like it so without any further ado let's get this out let's find out what it's like and hopefully get the lovely thanet flyer train set up and running so expensive or not this train set looks fantastic i mean it's so compact really nice small box i'm surprised at how small it is actually beautiful artwork on the front i mean look at that loco there definitely one of the nicest liveries isn't it that malachite green just can't wait to get my hands on it really and truly there is one thing i don't quite understand about this though and that is the sort of target audience i mean train sets are for beginners right it makes sense they have the track the controller and everything this train set isn't great for beginners, it's super expensive, the loco inside I know to be super detailed, it's not really ideal for beginners, and yet it's in a beginner set, it's just who were they aiming for with this, hmm, strange. Either way, if I show you the front you can see we do have a lovely image of the loco and coaches, it's a shame there are only two coaches there, I think a third would be really really lovely, particularly given the price, but I guess the price isn't too unreasonable if they're super detailed. Not really familiar with the coaches in this set, so we will find out for sure in due course whether they are or not on the back of the box here you can see what the train set includes so i mean it's relatively self-explanatory really it has the n-class inside which is a lovely southern mogul from the secr originally i think two bullet coaches there's a bit about them there an ac mains wall transformer a controller and an oval of track so it is basic stuff we've not got loads of extra accessories with this but it should be a pretty good standalone set i would say and if you are interested in exactly what this is it's 30-165 the thanet flyer train set and that's all there is. So before I get this out, I will just flip the pack over and show you the back of the box. There's actually nothing really pertaining to the train set itself. There's a bit about extending the layout, which I would recommend, obviously, because it's got points and you can do a lot more with sidings and different routes that your trains can take. And there's also a few more um, train packs on offer from Backman at the bottom there. I have tried a couple of those. Maybe I should try some of the others. Except that blue Pullman, though. My goodness. Can't quite afford that, I don't think. <laughs> Right, I've not had the lid off this since I bought it, so I'm really interested to see how this is all coming together. Ooh, okay. Okay, so we have NAF packaging, first things first. There's no protection whatsoever for anything inside. It's the same story, same was true with the Midland Marvel train set. Very silly, Backman. I don't know why you do that. Anyway, let me... Um, well, let's have a look, shall we? We've got the controller. I'll tell you what, I'm not even going to bother looking at the controllers. Check out my Midland Marvel train set if you want to see me go over the controller and other accessories. Uh, I don't want to be too repetitive with that. So with that, let's skip straight ahead onto the loco and rolling stock. I'm going to just pull this sheet back if I can. And what shall we do? I, I'm more familiar with the loco. I have owned an N-Class before, although admittedly not one in such a beautiful guise. For a train set loco, this is quite something special, it must be said. Let's take out this piece of foam. Wow, this thing is absolutely beautiful. It really is beautiful. Look at that colour. It is the most stunning, in fact, malachite livery I've ever seen. It's vibrant as anything, really vibrant. The Loco 2 is really quite heavy. I mean, for a train set Loco, I mean, it's an expensive train set, yes, but even so, there's a lot of weight to that. And the running plate is indeed made of metal, and you can tell because it's cold to the touch. You do have this abhorrent Loco to tender drawbar, which is horrendous. It causes all sorts of problems, or at least it did on my other end class. 
and you can also see we don't have any tender pickups or anything like that on the loco and i do know that the actual quality of these n-class mechanisms leaves a lot to be desired particularly when you consider what these cost but i'm just being completely won over by just the looks of this loco absolutely gorgeous is that really really love that so i will be giving you a close-up look at that loco in just a second Next up though, let's take a look at the coaches. The amazing thing about these is they don't appear to be the standard run-of-the-mill coaches that Backman palm off in every set, the railway children, ambulance train, you name it really. No, these are bullied coaches and they look to be altogether different. So let's take out the top one first then. This is the brake, I believe. And let's see what this is like. Okay, so it's not too bad. This looks reasonably good. It's got metal wheels, reasonable amount of weight to it. I can see there is a reasonable interior and quite a bit of detail. We've not quite got the sort of full detail that you might expect from a super expensive modern coach. We don't have the NEM couplings. There are a lot of other details that I can see are a little bit on the basic side, but generally speaking, it is above and beyond what you'd expect from a train set, particularly if you're familiar with Hornby ones. So that looks really nice. And of course, Southern coaches, I love them. I just love the color. I suppose, are they Malachite as well? I suppose they are. Let's get the other one out then, which I assume will be a similar sort of thing. Yeah, they are nice. I think this is going to look really lovely as an assembled train. What do you reckon? Yeah, they are more than adequate, aren't they? Very, very nice. It's a shame there isn't a third. I would love to have had a third. That would have made a fantastic set. But yeah, I would be interested in getting any more of these. If anybody knows where I can get some more, <laughs> do let me know in the comments. I can spy a couple of detail packs, though, so I will just pull those out. This one appears to be for the loco, they both might well be actually. Uh, so we've got head code disc steps, vacuum fittings, looks like a few bits for the tender as well on there. So they're really nice. The head code discs are a really nice inclusion. It's great to see those. And what's in the next one? Uh, well, these must be for the coaches. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing they must be. Uh, if anyone recognizes what those are for, let me know. We'll have a look and see if the instructions cover those. But yeah, some extra bits if you want them. Not bad. Okay, let's just have a quick look just to double check what else we get in the pack. I'll at least try and show you everything. Okay, so what do we get in terms of track then? So we have, it seems, two long straights, or double straights, as they're called in the trade. There we go. I'm not going to set up this oval of track today because, like I say, I've done it on previous videos. But uh, yeah, it seems all right. Good quality, reasonable enough. It does unfortunately seem that this is just second radius track, which is a bit of a shame because obviously rather than giving you the tools you need to support every loco and expand, they're just giving you the minimum they can get away with, <laughs> which is a shame. It is nickel silver track though, not steel or anything like that. Uh, so I suppose it is relatively good quality. It will be fit for purpose, I'm sure. And then what do we have here? There, there is a little bit of paperwork. Let's just have a look. Expanding your layout, it says. There we go. There's some more of the other track that Backman have on offer. What is this? This might be a poster. I think I've had posters before. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. I like, I like a good poster. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's very good. Now, you see, they didn't mention that on the box. So there's a bit about safety, train set assembly, all of that good stuff, showing you how to put the tracks together. Uh, I think it's just really assuming that you're a beginner and covering the basics just in case. And then this just looks like a bit about product maintenance and care. Yeah, that's all the stuff we've seen before. Running in, DCC, lubrication, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. And a bit about the warranty and such. So, yeah, it's all basic stuff. The loco is the most exciting part by a long way, I would say. I uh, just can't wait to get a close look at this. So... I will give you a bit of info on the N-Class because they are quite an interesting old design. And once I've done that, I will show you a close-up of the Loco and let's say one of the coaches and then later on we'll get it together and test it out. Okay, let's do it. So the N-Class was first introduced in 1914 to the design of Richard Mornsall for mixed traffic duties on the SECR. 1914, it's a lot older than it looks really, the design, isn't it? Production continued though until 1934, so a very long time, by which time 80 had been produced in total. The class was heavily influenced by the Great Western 4300 class, which as you might know was another mogul, and it featured two outside cylinders, Walshirts valve gear and bell pair fireboxes, all of which coming in at a little over 100 tonnes for maximum route availability of course. 
the N-Class proved themselves to be generally great performers, excellent with both freight and passenger trains, and they were well liked by their crews, which I suppose is most important of all. Around 80 of the class were produced, but only one of them remains in preservation. The rest were very sadly withdrawn and scrapped between 1962 and 1966, as was the case with many a steam loco, unfortunately. Okay, so there it is then, the Southern Green N-Class, up close and personal for you, and isn't this a beauty? I just love this livery. The livery is sending me crazy, uh, but I'm going to have to try and come back down to earth and be absolutely honest about this. But yeah, it must be said, this thing looks incredibly smart and really beautiful, gorgeous, in fact, in that livery. Do I think this is worth the RRP, loco alone, of course, of £159.95? No, I do not. And in fact, if Batman think they're being anywhere close to reasonable with that RRP, they need a huge reality check. Prices like that insult the intelligence of their customers. I'm sorry to say it, but I think that's true. This model lacks the quality, it lacks the finesse, and it lacks the detail to justify a price such as that. Now, I'm going to address that Magic 3. The quality I'll talk about later on because it's the mechanism that lacks the quality. Let's talk about the lack of finesse. Well, there are big gaps between different parts. You can see the dome at the top there. There's a big crack around that. Same with the smoke box door. There's a big sort of gap around the side of the smoke box. You've also got this very noticeable parting line which runs right across the whole top of the loco. Very noticeable, very unrealistic of course, and not really what you'd expect on an incredibly expensive model such as this. We've got dodgy pipework, as you can see there's a lot of flab on the pipework. It's not quite flashing, it looks like it's been chucked out of the mould before it's fully hardened perhaps, and it's gone a bit funny looking. If they were made of metal that would be better. You've also got this large undetailed area underneath the boiler which is quite noticeable because it's got high shine. Yes, it's very unlikely that the real thing would have had that just blank area under there. And to top it all off, we've got messy green paintwork spattered all over the running plate on the other side. I mean, Bankman, where is your quality control? If you're going to charge what you do for your models, messes like this are totally unacceptable. Bankman, where's your quality control? This is not a rare thing. <laughs> Remember this? Seems it crops up quite a lot. Not acceptable. You've also got quite a few visible screws as well, which is, come on, that's not acceptable, is it? Is there really no other way to achieve these effects without visible screws? I don't know, other manufacturers seem to manage it. And finally, of course, I said this has a lack of detail. Yeah, I think it does. The level of detail generally is pretty good, I must say. But as you can see, there's no painted cab or anything like that. Come on now, for £160 or even £99, which is what rails are selling this loco for, you want a painted cab these days. That cab is far too exposed not to be painted. And elsewhere on the model, the level of detail is okay. I mean, a lot of the elements here are just part of the molding, not an awful lot of separately fitted parts. And some elements such as the safety valves, for example, may or may not be made of metal, but they certainly don't have a metallic shine to them. As you can see, the reversing rod is also clearly just made of black plastic as opposed to metal which does come across as a little bit cheap and nasty perhaps on what is quite an expensive model. And a lot of the pipe work, the cylinder drain cocks for example, don't really look like metal, they just look like unpainted plastic, which is a little bit of a shame. But let's get on to the positives though, because the loco, as I said, and truthfully so, is incredibly smart. The livery and the application of the decoration is superb. Look at the lining on the boiler here. It's done to an incredibly high standard. Can't fault it really. It's a treat for the eyes. The running plate, <laughs> a treat for the eyes, my God. The running plate is really nicely painted as well. You've got that lining right across, and as I say, that running plate is made of metal, so you've got good weight to this loco. I need to weigh it, actually, to let you know how much it weighs. Yeah, features like that are fantastic. Side of the cab, as you can see, decoration, beautiful. Loads of lining. You've got the running number there, which is 1854 for this loco, and I like the steps as well. Look at the decoration on the steps there. That's very good. On the front of the cab, we've got some beautiful lining around the windows, which are glazed, but unfortunately the glazing has this really crazy poor quality texture to it, which means that the glazing is not actually transparent. You couldn't see through it if it was real. Uh, it'd be quite dangerous, wouldn't it? Yeah, not very good that either. We have the separately fitted handrails along the side of the loco there, as well as the separately fitted smoke deflectors, which have little grab rails on them, which is great. The smoke box door is relatively basic, but prototypically so. It does have the separately fitted handrail on the front there. And the buffer beams are nicely detailed. I suppose when you consider that this is a train set loco, features such as the sprung buffers are very impressive. Although, don't forget, this is a very expensive train set. It's not like a, a £100 Hornby set. 
If it was, it would be more impressive. There's another look at the cab though, as you can see here, it's very, very basic. Not only is it unpainted, but a lot of the details inside there, the regulator, most of the levers and whatnot appear just to be a part of the molding. There's nothing separately fitted. And we don't have a tender fall plate on this Loco either. So the Loco and tender do just sort of sit apart. The coupling is relatively close. I suppose this is why they have that strange coupling between Loco and tender, which is so ineffective and causes so many derailments. Or at least it did on my previous example. Maybe I got a bad one. We'll see how this one goes but it does mean that the loco and tender are more closely coupled. The cylinders are nicely moulded, as you can see there's a great deal of finesse to those. The valve gear, coupling rods, linkage, etc. Walshirt's valve gear looks very nice and fine, very impressive looking actually, can't wait to see that running. And the wheels are nicely painted as well, the centres of each axle have been nicely painted as well. They're not covered axles, but I think that is prototypical to the livery, so I'm not going to fault that at all. The tender is beautiful as well, partly because of the lining. It's again, it's a bit like the Fowler tenders in that it has those arches on the underframe, which are just so elegant in my opinion. Absolutely love that. And all of that lining just brings it to life, doesn't it? It looks fantastic. I love the green wheels as well. It gives you a little bit of something that stands out between the frames there. The southern lettering is nicely applied as it was on the loco, very good to see. We've got a very large coal load fitted into this one. Uh, I don't know whether that's removable or not. Uh, most of the backman coal is usually sort of die cast metal. This one doesn't seem to be, but it does have a nice realistic finish to it, which is good. Around the back, we have a multitude of separately fitted lamp irons. They are quite flush to the body, which makes it look like they are just molded on, but I don't think they are. I think they're metal and separately fitted, which is okay. And unlike on the coaches, we do have the NEM coupling fitted to the back of the loco, which can be replaced if you want it to be. So that's pretty decent. And I should say that the brake rods have been pre-fitted to the loco and tender as well. So that's not something you have to do yourself, which is pretty handy. So there we go. The level of detail is okay, I would say. I think the price, at least of the loco on its own, suggested that the level of detail would be much greater than it is. But overall, the livery is beautiful. The overall shape and character and look of the loco is fantastic. I suppose it's all going to come down to the performance. So let's get it down onto my track and we'll give it a test. I'm not going to set up the train set track that it came from. Again, refer to my Midland Marvel video if you want to see what sort of track you get with this train set. I believe in that set it was the same as this. First though, let's take a close look at one of those coaches. So it's fairly clear that these coaches are sort of older coaches that Backman have repurposed for this set. They're not the most detailed in the world, but they are reasonable, I would say, again, for a train set. And when you think about the cost of the entire train set, it doesn't seem as though the coaches account for very much of the total cost. So I guess it's fair enough. What do I mean by that? Well, the underframe is a little bit on the chunky side, as you can see. You'd expect a bit more finesse on a modern coach. But if I show you the underside, you can see there is a lot of detail underneath there. Why there's detail inside the bogies like that, I don't know, but it's quite impressive to see that. On the coach body itself, you can see a lot of the smaller parts are just part of the molding. We don't have the separately fitted door handles or grab rails or anything like that. However, the decoration is very nice. You can see the southern lettering there looks perfect. And also some of those door handles, well, all of the door handles and such have been picked out with the gold paint, which is lovely. Yeah, there's just something about these coaches which looks fantastic. I think it's just so typical of Bullied's look, isn't it? You've got these sort of rivets above all the windows. Uh, yeah, riveting. It's just a classic Bullied design feature, isn't it? You can just tell they're Bullied coaches. I love it. They look just like Bullied Locos as well, which is so cool. The interiors are okay as well. There's nothing really painted inside there, but the moulding on the different compartments and the seats and the little armrests and such are all very good. I can't fault that at all. And up on top, there's quite a bit of detail, including these separately fitted wire parts. I'm not 100% sure what those would be for. I don't think I've seen those on any of my coaches before, so that's interesting. Do let me know if you know what those are for. And then on the end, you have these rubberized joiners where the passengers would walk between coaches. They are made of rubber, which is a nice touch, actually. Uh, yeah, there are many expensive coaches that don't have that feature, which is cool. A little bit of decoration on the ends there. It looks a bit naff, though. I'm not sure if that's readable or not. A lot of the detail, as you can see there, is just a part of the moulding. And it does show, really, you know, if you'd spent 40, 50 quid on this coach, you probably wouldn't be too happy about that. And the buffers are not sprung or anything like that. As I've already pointed out, the wheels on these coaches are made of metal, which is a nice touch. They have plastic axles, it seems, which is a bit confusing. Sadly, they don't have NEM couplings, though, which is a bit frustrating, particularly given the fact that the Loco does. Yeah, why that is, I'm not too sure. They could have probably quite easily upgraded them, but obviously they did not. So, as promised, let's get all of this down onto the track. We'll see how freewheeling these coaches are. We'll talk about the Loco mechanism, and we'll give it its first run together. 
Okay, so there she is then, number 1854, the N-Class down onto the track, and it just looks fantastic. I can't get over how lovely this looks. I'm sorry to keep banging on about that. Yeah, it just looks stunning. Now let's talk about the mechanism then. Unfortunately, as is quite often the case with Bachmann, the mechanism lets this loco down big time. First of all though, let's start off positive because the weight is a very, very good aspect of this model. It weighs in at 369 grams, loco and tender. That is quite a lot, that's more than other Bachmann locos. It's more than the Patriot, which of course wasn't a mogul, that was a, a larger 460. It's even more than the standard 4 tank, which is obviously quite a, a hefty piece as well. Yeah, the weight is pretty good. The mechanism itself though, as I say, does let the model down big time. First of all, no tender pickups, and worse than that, it doesn't have any connection to the tender. The DCC socket is inside the loco, which very much limits your option, particularly if you're interested in DCC sound. The fact that it doesn't have tender pickups as well means that the driving wheels are solely responsible for picking up power. As soon as they become a little bit dirty, we're going to get problems. Not very good for an expensive loco. Also, the Loco has no proper bearings on the wheel set. The axles sit straight into the chassis, so that's not very good either. And we have just a three-pole motor inside this as well. When Locos cost that much, the mechanisms have to be better. Simple as that. So on paper, the mechanism isn't very good. That's in theory, but in practice, let's see how it is. Uh, now, this has not been running yet. This Loco is still brand new, so it might not be at its best right now. However, as always, I will run this loco in before I pass a final judgment. But straight out of the box, this is how it runs. Let's hope it does. Fingers crossed. Okay, let's turn it up see what that crawls like. Ooh, <laughs> okay. So the tender was juddering quite a lot there, uh, probably because the connection's a bit strange, the drawbar. All right, well, it was clear that it, oh my word, <laughs> it's quite noisy. It was clear that it wasn't going to crawl that well, so let's just run it up and down a few times. It runs quite quickly, I'll say. Man, that is noisy. Again, the lack of proper bearings there probably is responsible for that noise. Listen. Man, it sounds like a, a real train coming. Except you wouldn't really want a real train sounding like that because it's too unhealthy. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, it doesn't have to be quiet. That's not really one of my requirements. Let's try a crawl, though, now that it's had a chance to do that a little bit. OK, this is the out-of-the-box crawl. After this, I'll run it in and then try again later. Turning it up real slow. There we go. Oh, it moved. There we are. No, it's not a crawler, I'm afraid. That's literally as slow as it will go. That's not very good. I perhaps will give it some oil before I allow it to run in, but yes. Right, 50% speed then, here we go. Let's watch it run. Yeah, I don't know. Besides the general looks of the thing, it's not that impressive. And the gearing, ugh, tenders off. The tender drawbar is awful. That has come straight off. Let's try and put it back on again. Okay, we're at 40% speed now, let's try again. I just can't understand that drawbar mechanism. Yeah, no, no, it's off again. Yeah, and this is typical of the N-Class because my other olive green N-Class that you'll see later had the same problem. I actually had to cut the drawbar out of that one and fit in my own custom one. How incompetent. So more specifically on the loco and tender issue, I think they've tried to be clever and couple the loco and tender quite close and they've invented like a coupling which allows the tender to rotate uh, without actually banging into the loco, right? Which sounds great on paper and it does work if the loco and tender are pushed together like I'm pushing them now. But let's say you actually want to run the thing. I don't know, maybe Backman haven't considered something as crazy as that. But let's say you've got the weight of the tender and possibly some coaches, and you've got some tension on the tender. Now try the same thing. See that? See the unsmooth movement there? That is not at all good. Look at that, did you see that? <laughs> let's do that again. Oof. And that, I think, is what does it. It just doesn't move as it should. Look at that, it's all weird. That's probably why it's derailing. Either way, it's nothing but trouble. Okay, middle line. Oh, 
All right, so it seems to be getting away with it now. As I was gonna say, yeah, the gearing's not very good. Look how fast that's running at 50% speed. Yes, it must be said there are elements of this model which are very incompetently designed. Anyway, I'll let this run in and we'll see if the performance is any better after it's done so. Okay, folks, we are back. It's had some oil and it's done around an hour's running in. I wish I could say this was a better runner now, but sadly it's not. I'm, I'm not happy with the way this performs. It's just too darn fast for a start. I find that I'm having to turn it right down on the controller in order to get it to run at a, a slow speed. But of course on DC, you're effectively lowering the voltage by doing that. The current's the same though, so the voltage drop is even more pronounced around the layout, so you get inconsistent speed. <sighs> no flywheel either, by the way, so if I stop it dead, hang on, let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go back and bring it back into shot. 50% speed, which is too fast anyway. Stop it dead, it just the wheels lock right up. It's just not a very good mechanism at all. Uh, let's see if the crawl's any better though. Uh, I doubt it again because the gearing basically prevents it, but we'll see. There we are, a little bit of a jump. Nope, there we go. No, nope, it's died. No, nope, needs a bit more. Oh, no, no. So it's struggling along at that speed. It's not particularly slow. Again, if it had a five pole motor, not a three pole, <laughs> I am sort of hating on this, aren't I? But it deserves it. It's, it's rubbish, in my opinion. Look at that. Such a beautiful loco. It, it tears me apart to say that such a thing's rubbish because it is a beauty. But all things considered, I mean, the derailing tender, why? Why? If a design feature causes a loco to consistently derail, and they do, I've had so many messages about these derailing, I knew it was a problem. And I've experienced it firsthand, as I say, with uh, my other loco. Yeah, it is at least reasonably smooth at that speed. Well, a bit more, about like that. And the pulling power is very good, it must be said. I've measured that this can haul around 27 coaches. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. Okay, well, let's get the coaches on then and see how they run. Okay, so there goes the brake, and here goes the non-brake. we are, see if the couplings work. Yep, yeah, so the couplings are at the right height. The couplings are fit for purpose, unless you want to change them, in which case you can with the loco, but you can't with the coaches. That's very annoying as well. Uh, let's back the loco up then, see what she looks like together with the coaches. The answer is beautiful. They match really, really nicely. The colour scheme is fantastic. I really enjoy the malachite greens. There you go, there's the whole lot together. I wish there was another coach, you know, three coaches, something like that, for 179 would have been fantastic, given how basic they are, and let's get real here again. They can't cost that much to produce. Either way, let's get these set running all together then. Take it away, end class. We are, that's 30% speed. And then I've talked about this loco quite a lot today, uh, so why not show it? It is my other end class uh, in the sort of olivish green. I don't really know what the technical name is, sorry. Uh, this one's very much the same, except I re-engineered, <laughs> I think re-engineered is a bit of a, a generous term really. Um, I altered the loco and tender connection uh, so that it's just literally a bit of plastic sticking out. It's a DVD case, it's a piece of DVD case sticking out the back of a loco on a bit of wire that I put inside there. It sticks out the back, there's a little sort of rod on the back of the tender which hooks onto a hole that I drilled into the bit of flimsy plastic. And guess what? It works better than Backman's expensive solution <laughs> that actually came on the loco. What were they thinking? Were they thinking at all? <laughs> I don't know. But either way, it works now. I just might have to do that with my Malachite one now. And then on the inside line, uh, hopefully you can see the theme now. We're going with Southern Railway tender engines. We have the Hornby Lord Nelson class with some lovely coaches. These are what I consider to be good quality modern coaches. NEM couplings, separately fitted parts, separately fitted door handles, nice interiors. Yeah, if they were like that, then I'd be a lot happier. All right, let's have a running session. See if you can spot which other Southern locos are out on the railway, and there is an odd one out. It's such a great shame about this set because it looks fantastic. But it, in all seriousness, if the folks at Backman thought all of this was okay, they need to take a long look at themselves. They need to look at their products. They need to look at their competitors' products. And although it sounds harsh, they need to bring themselves into the real world. 
That is a lot of money to spend on what is very much a set not fit for purpose. It's a great shame. Usually I'd ask you guys to sort of let me know down in the comments if you think I'm being reasonable or not, but I feel 100% certain on this one. I know that a lot of this stuff is completely unacceptable. I mean, those big paint blobs on the running plate. Since when has that been okay? I, I don't get it. And again, this is a train set. This was a train set. This is for beginners, people just getting into the hobby. It's one thing that it's so expensive because that in itself makes the train set really not that fit for purpose. But having spent all that money to then get a train set that has so much wrong with it, that has such poor quality, that has so many downfalls, it just blows my mind. I'm short circuiting just thinking about it. Oh, I'm a backman. My... So let's take a look at my ratings then for the Backman Thanet Flyer train set. Yeah, unfortunately this one was a big letdown. I love the look of the loco, the coaches. I thought, you know, this has got to be a great set. But unfortunately, even for the price the retailers charge, £139 odd, somewhere around that area, there are issues with this train set that are not acceptable for that price. In fact, some of them aren't acceptable for any price, no matter how reasonable. The level of detail then, let's talk about that. I've given it just a three star. Uh, the low coat was better than the coaches, I would say. The paintwork was absolutely fantastic. I really like that. However, there are a lot of missing details. The cab, for example, why was there no painted detail inside there? It was a very basic cab. You've got dodgy glazing in the windows. Lots of the details were plastic. The reversing rod wasn't very realistic as a result of that. You've got no detail between the frames, yet the detail on the loco left a lot to be desired. The coaches, equally, were quite dated as well, as you saw. The performance, though, I have to give just a one star. There was nothing really good about the performance. So the crawl was really, really bad. It's not going to be doing a good crawl at all. No matter what I did, I've oiled it. I've put it right next to the controller on the track. It just wasn't going to crawl. Even at a medium speed, the loco runs way too fast. That's probably the reason why it won't crawl properly. The gearing's all over the place with this, unfortunately. Not only does it mean that the loco can't crawl, but it's probably gonna put the motor under some stress as well as a result. And yes, my other N-Class did have a problem with the motor. I actually had to take the motor to pieces to clean it out because it had overheated and started to damage itself. Also, the tender derails as well constantly. The engineering behind the loco and tender connection is just an absolute joke. What's wrong with just a normal drawbar that pivots normally? This thing goes all, it's just so complicated. Must have been expensive to develop and manufacture. Why? Why? It derails and so did my other version. Now I've got to find a way to replace the drawbar on this. The performance was pants, let's be honest. The pulling power was very good though. I measured that this loco should be able to manage 27 coaches, which is really good. That's close to the Hornby 9F. It is at least a powerful loco, which of course means the gearing is even more dangerous because it could damage the motor, I think. The mechanism then, two star. We've already talked about this, no tender pickups, no DCC socket in the tender, it's in the loco, so you don't have that many choices. No proper bearings, three pole motor. Yeah, it's not a very good mechanism either. The quality also sucked, I must say. For the price, there's no room for quality sucking like this one did. So let's see here, we've got paintwork all over the running plate, that wasn't very good at all. Big gaps between different components on the bodywork. The mechanism, of course, is pretty poor quality. That tender connection is really poor quality. We've got inconsistent couplings. We don't have NEM couplings on the coaches, for example. I did like the die cast though, so it gets a couple of stars for that. Yeah, the loco's good and heavy, but besides that, yeah, build quality, not very good. Value for money then, now, yeah, you do get a relatively well detailed loco and two coaches for your money here, so it's not terrible. The controllers are all right, the tracks are okay. Uh, for £139.50, as you can get from Rails of Sheffield, it's not a terrible price, not terrible. The RRP is £180, though. That's too much, Backman. Come on now, get real. So I've given it three stars, sort of middle of the road. Not great, not terrible. Can't really recommend it, though. Overall, then, that is 5.13 out of 10. Yeah, unfortunately, there was just something that made it fall down on every category, which rendered the final score not very impressive at all. Into the logbook we go then. <laughs> oh, dear. 33rd above the Helgen 1361 and below the 52XX. For this to have gotten a good score for £179 or even £140, there had to be a few better features. Not happy, not impressed. Sorry, folks. It's a lemon. It's a very good looking, a very expensive, but very sour tasting lemon. <laughs> I guess that is harsh, but I think it's deserved because I the disappointment's real, man. I was looking forward to this. Yeah. 
I think once I've had chance to look at that drawbar and maybe just do what I did with my other end class and fix it, I might feel a bit better about running the loco because don't get me wrong, it's it's a beauty, isn't it? As long as you don't look at the cab and other bits like that. Overall, it's a beauty. So yeah, it's the loco at least is a welcome addition to the collection. Coaches, well, not so much. They're quite basic. There's only two of them, so it's not really a substantial rake, is it? You want minimum three. Yeah, it's all right. I guess it's all right. Five out of ten. I'm not saying it, it's terrible. I'm not saying it's good. It's certainly not good. But yeah, you guys will have to let me know in the comments. What do you think? You know, give me a rating out of ten, maybe, for the train set. Are the downfalls issues that would put you off, or would you live with them? I don't know. For me, it would need to be way cheaper. You know, I'd want to be paying eighty quid for this. <laughs> yeah. I think that's reasonable because, yeah, Hornby train sets, 120 quid for a Hornby train set, whatnot, you get a degree of quality. And I think if you're a beginner, at the very least, that's what you need. You don't want the cheapest possible mechanism that's going to fail on you just because you didn't give it some oil or because you hooked it up with too many coaches. No, they need to be able to take that sort of thing. I, I do believe that. I truly believe that. Well, folks, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry about the negative tone, but hey, I've got to be honest. You guys have subscribed to hear me be honest. You subscribe to hear me tell it how it is. In my own words, using my own opinions, that's what I did. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. appreciate your company, as always. And I'll see you next time. I'll try and find a better train set at some point for you. How's that? We'll see. All right, folks, you look after yourselves. See you soon.